Yeah, exactly. If Lance, and first of all, if Lance is is uh, who they think he is, nobody's going to care about Jimmy where he winds up or how he does for the most part. Right. Uh, right? I, I think I think Lance is going to be quite a bit better than Jimmy. I really believe that. Uh, I do too. Let's, two last questions. Two last questions, and we'll let you go. Are the 49ers, in your opinion, more set at wide receiver or at running back? Um, it's tough because you got Debo and you got Ayuk and you got Juwan yeah. Jennings. So on, on the surface, you got three three decent receivers. You just added Ray Ray McLeod, who gives your return guy a little bit of a speed element, but you don't have the you don't have a difference making slot receiver and you don't have a vertical threat and you don't create space for Ayuk. And I think Ayuk got uh I think Ayuk didn't like the fact that he was used as the vertical threat, run off the coverage, open things up for other people this year. I don't think he wants to you know man that no. position. I also think year. that I, I still think there was something more. I know people wanted to play it off, play it off early in the season as there was no doghouse. I thought some of that usage was kind of sticking it to him. And then when Shanahan said he wasn't running hard enough in practice, I thought my my read of the situation is we're gonna make you run these routes, these clear out routes, what you know Stafford and Cooper Cup called love of the game routes. And if you run these really, really hard, then you will earn the opportunity to be a part of the offense. That's how I read that situation. I don't know how you did. I thought that was a little bit of punishment. I, I just think it was a skill set situation where who you're going to ask Juwan Jennings to run off the coverage. No. Are you going to ask Debo to run off the coverage? No, no tight end can run off the coverage. So you don't, and Travis Benjamin wasn't healthy. I thought so, towards the end of the year, they used Benjamin on those, yeah, on those, right. you know, they run off Benjamin. the coverage. Right. Right. You know, but and, and it helped, they it helped piece, because so it they opened had up a spot it. and it helped because it opened up a spot in a 21 personnel offense because their best receiver was in the backfield for half the snaps. So it, it helped to be able to get both Benjamin and Ayuk on the field. And now routes that, you know, pass concept that primarily go to Debo. Now Debo might be the runner and they might, you know, you might see a little more balls Ayuk's way too. So I think it was a little, it was a uh, uh, mixture of a few different things, but I'm actually going to go with running back. Running back. And the reason I'm going to go with running back is because you talked about the difference making slot receiver. To me, they got a difference making slot receiver. I I like Ray Ray McLeod. I really like his short area quickness. I think that he can be like a Taylor Gabriel type for this offense. I really do. Um, I think that that's why they gave him the money they gave him. Shanahan's never a fan of just you know the quote unquote returner, and he's definitely not a fan of a guy who fumbles and gives the ball away in the return game. I think they looked at his athletic skill set, and that's what they're excited about for what he can be in this offense because he can give you a little bit of the – I don't want to call it the Debo because, you know, running jet sweeps – people were running jet sweeps in the NFL before Debo Samuel came. He just is the best maybe at running jet sweeps that we've ever seen. But um, jet sweeps, you know, um, the push pass, all of that, I, I think that – um. From that standpoint, Ray Ray McLeod can give you an element of it. Ayuk gives you an element of it. But then from the slot, I think Ray Ray McLeod's short area quickness is going to be a little bit game changing for them because I think that he's going to be the best guy in a tight space that they have. And then I thought Juwan Jennings was okay at the end of the season. He was definitely pretty good where you can feel pretty comfortable with the running backs. Honestly, I'm not sure about what, right? Like Jeff Wilson Jr., I don't know where his knee's at. I'm not a big hasty fan. Um, Trey Sermon, I just told you, I think is going to do great with Trey Lance, but that's more based on, you know, projection rather than actual production because there's very little of it. And he was very productive in college, though. He was very productive in college. Yeah, he was 300 yard day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and also, you know, I mean, uh, uh, a guy called ED says, let's not forget that Debo factors into the running back depth. It's kind of part of this question is where do you want to play Debo? You know, right. do you want to give him $70 million like Devonte and some of these guys or receivers are getting and then play him at running back? So I don't know if that makes sense, but is he Your more offense- of a running back or is he more of a, or is he, be- is Debo better as a running back or as a receiver? I think he's better as a running back. Your offense is better though. If you have a really, really good running back to go with Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, right? Cause it doesn't, I agree. cause I, cause I thought, I thought as good as Elijah Mitchell played for a rookie, I thought a lot of meaningful snaps um, 
kind of came down to, well, to get, we got to get Debo the ball. So let's just put him in the backfield because we're not sure, you know, if Mitchell can be as effective on this run as Debo is. And part of it is because Debo Samuel is one of the best players in the NFL and Elijah Mitchell is a rookie. Um, There's a stark talent difference between both and it's taking nothing away from Elijah Mitchell. I mean, he had a great rookie season, but that's just how special Debo Samuel is. But I, I think that to me, like if you, even if you factor in Debo as a running back, Debo is not a running back that can carry carry the ball two hundred times. Debo is well, not a short that yardage. Carry, back. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I would like to see them play Debo at running back and get, but get a short yardage back. I don't want to see Debo Trey Samuel Sermon. anymore on third and one. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. come on, this guy is too big of a guy for your offense. Too too dynamic to run him in the a gaps. Um, you know, on 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 short yardage. You got to get a short yardage back this year that you trust. But to answer your question, I th- I think Ray Ray McLeod gives the receiver position a little more clarity than the re-signing of Jeff Wilson Jr. does for the running back position. Because I'm still not 100 percent sure Jeff Wilson Jr. was is healthy. Because I thought I was shocked that he didn't even get an opportunity uh, down the stretch. Like they didn't even go to him. It was either Mitchell or Debo. Nobody else. Because. Jeff Wilson's a pretty good running back when healthy. So I thought maybe his knee had something to do with it. Sermon, again, is more uh, projection rather than production so far in the NFL. I'm not a big hasty fan in any sort of way. Um, I think he's a... Why, because of the fumbles? The fumbles. um, The fumbles is the main. I'm not a big fan of him as a runner. I think the size size thing, I mean, being 5'7", one seven. You know who? You know who? Jermichael Hasty reminds me of a little bit. Who's that? This is a little throwback. Dewan Harris, who I really liked. Little uh, little dump off back. You couldn't even find him. He was like five that, six. That's right? okay. If you like him, then you must like Jermichael Jema- Hasty a lot. I, I like Jermichael Hasty, but I like him as um, as as a returner, as a kick returner, and as a um, depth piece. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you're if you're if he's in your you know one two or three running backs, you're probably not a championship caliber club. Right? Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Um, I think the big issue is that at this point he was he beat out Trey Sermon last year, who they traded up for a third round pick. So again, it's pro- projection with Sermon. Um, I'm not convinced today that Mitchell is just going to be the running back one just because he had a really good rookie season, just because of the history of Shanahan's like Landis Gary had a fantastic rookie season. Um, Didn't they, they drafted, didn't they draft Clinton Portis the very next year after Landis Gary? Didn't they, or no, they traded Portis. No, they traded uh, Portis for for Champ Bailey. Bailey. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they drafted Clinton Portis in the first round the very next year after Landis Gary ran for 1200 yards for them. So, and that's, the, so I don't, I like sustainability with the Shanahan running backs and who they like and who they don't like. I, I don't put any money in any long-term investment into any running back um, that with the Shanahan's because year to year, it feels like, oh, this guy's the guy. Nope. This guy becomes the guy, right? Like how fast did they switch from Brita to Mostert? It was, it was just like that. It was yeah. so quick. So, um, Ooh. Tasio says, Larry, you're off. He's uh, Debo's a wide receiver. He just had extra things he can add to the game. Should not be his main focus. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you got to remember this. Think... It's a passing league now. So you, teams that throw to their running backs, you know, teams are throwing to the running backs more now than ever. And it's become a passing league. So teams are, you know, defenses are in the nickel and dime 70, over 70% of the time. I just think that that it's now such a passing league that a, a running back who can, who's got receiver skills has never had more value than in today's NFL. I, I think the thing also that you're pointing out, and I, I think this is important. It, I think it goes beyond position running back receiver. I think the reason you prefer him at running back is because what is Debo Samuel's best trait? It's with the right ball after in the his catch. Hands. It's yeah. with the ball in his hands. He's the best player with the ball in his hands in the NFL. Arguably it's him. Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill, like that's the conversation. Right. So if he's that good with the ball in his hands, I think Larry he's just says running back because that's a faster way to get the ball into his hands. But you don't you can absolutely- you yeah, I mean, if you have him as a running back, you can just you don't have to worry about can your quarterback are they doubling him? 
You know, yeah. that, well, what happened? Why didn't you get the ball to your receiver? Oh, they were doubling him. They were tilting the coverage to his side of the field. Uh, they took him away, you know, uh, you know, close that's to the line. An of element of, that's the element do that of an offense I would love to see, actually, a little bit more. I, I was shocked we didn't get a little bit more of it late last year. But Debo Samuel lined up as a running back, but then used in the pass game. You get favorable looks against linebackers versus Debo. No linebackers covering Debo Samuel. No safeties covering Debo Samuel. So, I mean, maybe that becomes a part of the offense too. I think it's a good thought. I'd love to add. If I have a great running back and a great wide receiver and they're both on the board, let's say it's Dotson from Penn State and Kenneth mm-hmm. Walker the third from uh, – from Michigan State, they're both there on the board at 61, and I'm sitting there debating. I probably go with the running back, even you though go with the running back. Really? I would go with the running back in that situation, just because I'm I want a dynamic player. But um, you know, I, I I you know the slot a small slot receiver to me the 49ers need a very specific receiver in this draft. Danny Gray is the guy that I really like for them because they need a speed merchant. They need somebody who who NFL you know that you know when Tyreek Hill's on the field. The Niners need a, a receiver that is so electric speed-wise that, man, you have to account for that guy because that's going to draw coverage away from Ayuk, away yeah. from Kittle, away from yeah. Debo, and I think open things up. They need a and, space-creating and it wide receiver. it doesn't even have to be a smaller guy, right? It's just a no. guy that can get vertically because I think that's the biggest thing right now. And that's why I, I've actually preferred Debo Samuel as a receiver in some elements, in some aspects to Brandon Ayuk, because um, even though there are, you know, technical things in Ayuk's game that are maybe a little bit better, like he's got, he's maybe a little smoother than Debo as an athlete. He's maybe got a little better hips than Debo. I think the off the ball explosion and the explosiveness of Debo Samuel is a lot more than Ayuk. And, um, if you're talking about a vertical receiver, to me, it's not just a guy that runs 4-3. The guy has to run 4-3 where he gets off the ball and he's flying. And, like, it can't be a build-up 4-3. Like, the guy Two-step has Two-step quickness. Be, that right. Three, you know, three to, steps, full speed. The guy can just get off the field and you're scared of him vertically, right? Like, Jamar Chase probably runs 4-4, but what makes Jamar Chase so special is that he feels like 4-2 on the field because he runs 4-4 from his like first step, second step. And he's so he's so explosive that even if you're a corner that runs 4-3 like Marlon Humphrey, you're scared of his speed because he can get vertically so quickly. And so because of that, I, I don't know if Ayuk necessarily scares corners all the time just with pure speed. Um, I think Debo actually does a little bit more because he's a little more explosive. Um, I, I saw them in person. I've been saying this for a little bit. A lot of people push back. I find, I think Debo's just faster than him. Um, it may be IU ran a faster 40. I think Debo's 40 might be a little faster. I think Debo's just faster than him. I, I think it's obvious in person. Debo, Debo's speed in person, especially because I, I got to watch him in person twice this season. Right. It, it's shocking. He's the fastest player on the field. Sometimes that's how it feels. Cause his acceleration is that crazy. He reminds me of T.O. He's, he he's noticeably oh, wow. faster with the ball in his hands than he is without the ball. Yeah. Like if you just watch him run a route, not that fast, but you see him on a sweep with the ball in his hands, incredibly fast. And T.O., the same thing. He ran an ordinary 40 time coming out of Tennessee Chattanooga. But man, T.O. with the ball in his hands, incredibly fast. Jerry Rice yeah. ran four, five, right. five or whatever. Mississippi Valley State coming uh-huh. out. He, he never got caught from behind his entire NFL career. He just and he was I, just gone. And I think that's the thing, right? When he runs his routes, I think that's where Ayuk has a discernible advantage. Like we talked about Debo versus Ayuk. Ayuk has better body control, in my opinion. So he's able to accelerate and decelerate in within his route a lot faster, a lot better than Debo, who you know can be a little bit choppy, can sometimes take a couple extra steps in his route because I don't think he controls his body as well as Ayuk in terms of decelerating, but. When it's just go with the ball in your hands, oh, my God, he's fast. Oh, my God, he's fast. 